Hey guys, it's a History Nerd, and we are back with another exciting episode of Order of Battle Pacific Japan. On where we last left off, we, uh, we started to shift over into the glorious uh, first real naval battle that we're going to be fighting. So, I want to thank you guys for the suggestions on the fleet makeup. I've done a little bit of research into the way this battle goes, and um, the comments as well, stating what goes on during the mission. And because of the Japanese forces' ability to capture, uh, specifically Bali, with the airfield, I am not going to be getting an aircraft carrier. Um, that will mean, of course, that my planes will be stuck coming out of one location, and that um, for the sake of the way the mission is set up, we're not going to be starting with any aircraft. Uh, but once we get the airfield, we'll be sure to drop down some planes and then um, really what this allows us to do is focus our fleet initially on the big guns which is going to be helpful um, when it comes to carriers you don't necessarily need a like a, an elite super unit because really all they are is just a mobile air platform. Like, they shouldn't ever really be getting into any sort of conflict. So as long as you get one when you need one, that's really all that matters. Uh, whereas with things like cruisers or battleships, you know, the more experience they can get right from the start, the better. So, without further ado, we're going to start taking a look at, at the ships we can buy. Now, the Yamato is a beautiful ship. She's also incredibly expensive. Um, if we were to go the Yamato route, we would only buy one. Obviously, we can't afford two. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards uh, the Nagato. Just because it will... It's, it's still, you know, big guns. But it will also allow me more money to spend on things like cruisers and destroyers. Uh, before I get too far ahead of myself, though... Whoops, let's pull that up, and let's take a look at the ships we can actually deploy. So we're going to drop down, whoa, we're going to drop down a destroyer here. In fact, what we might do is drop down two destroyers here. Oh, let's go ahead and make sure that guy gets repaired. And let's see, can we, oh, that that's a cruiser that's already, or destroyer that's already been deployed. Perfect. So let's check. I'm a shopping list, and we're just stuck with the torpedo bombers. Three torpedo bombers, my word. Um, what I also want to do when I get the chance, if I've got the spare funds, is to invest in a dive bomber and compare the dive bomber to the Kanko when it comes to dropping bombs, just to see which one is more effective. Because um, I like I like the Kanko because you can swap them right off the bat, and so you can have two torpedo bombers or two dive bombers provided they work like dive bombers and are as effective. So we'll have to check on that uh, at a later date. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab a tone and we're going to send it way up here. Oops, let's actually make sure I right click. One of these days I'll get used to that. And so if we take a look at this, we've got a light cruiser and a, uh, a, a normal cruiser along with quite a few destroyers. That should be good enough for whatever forces the, oh my god, what, Abad, Abada? <laughs> it's a crazy name for the fleet that we're facing, but it's basically, you know, the Australians, the British, the Americans, and the Dutch. So I think it's Americans, British, Australians, Dutch, Abada, or something like that? I don't know. Anyway... I'm sure you guys will let me know in the comments, and if I could look at it, I would, but I, you know, I'm, and I'm sure it'll pop up in the game. Anyway, that's enough jibber-jabbering. Let's get a Nagato down. And what do we got? We still have 300 points left, and we can get, um, probably one more cruiser. And I think we'll go with a tone down here. So, that should be pretty good. We've got a fair amount of money left over for other things, but as far as naval forces go, I think we're set. 
So let's go ahead, hit that deployment phase. And so again, at least two transports must arrive. Destroy or repulse all enemy ships. Destroy all ships. Don't lose the Bali invasion force. And sink the Deroider in 22 turns. Let's see if we can do all of that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and move these guys up here first. Because I know that we are going to run into, I think it's two destroyers and a cruiser. So as long as these guys are able to overpower them, and I'm going to be honest, I think we're looking pretty good up here, that transport should be safe. And we will do kind of the same thing over here. What I'm going to want to do, though, is make sure my fleet in the south, once we clear enough of these ships to keep this these two transports protected, and really the supply ship, um, I want to be able to combine my forces. Because I know most of the allied units are over here. That is probably really annoying to watch. <laughs> But most of my unit, most of the allied units are over here. I'm gonna want to hit, want to hit them with as much force as I can. Now I'm not taking any pot shots at these guys. Uh, who else needs to move? No, we don't know. We're not shooting at anybody. Okay, so we're fine. So now the way. We got a submarine somewhere. The way... Uh, I'm just going to turn the sound down just a bit in my headset. Uh, the way naval shooting works is you don't want to be moving full speed and then shooting. So, you know, you can adjust it like one, maybe two, uh, but you don't want to move too much. If we can see it. In this case, we can move, you know, up there and that won't be a problem. Uh, but you also want to not have your targets at extreme ranges. So we can see here, this guy is kind of at an extreme range for this light cruiser. It's only going to do one damage. If we move him closer, you can see that that goes uh, up to two. And then if we move him really close, that goes back down to one. So I think that just has to do with movement. But what we will do is move our cruiser as far north as we can while still keeping that high damage. And then our destroyers, we know that there's a submarine around here. Way up there. So we're going to go ahead and fire some depth charges at it. Now, we're going to discuss for a moment the way submarine warfare works. Now, if I move this guy over, he should be within range to drop... Depth charges on this guy, right? We got a, a USS Seawolf there, but he can't. So, for this destroyer to be able to drop depth charges, he needs to use a sonar attack. Despite the fact that a destroyer in the fleet has already done a sonar attack, identified and located the submarine, we can't communicate that between destroyers. This is my biggest pet peeve of the way anti submarine warfare works in this game, is that Every single destroyer you devote to it has to do the sonar search despite other destroyers finding it. Now, if this was a game where, like, you know, you actually had to move destroyers over a submarine to drop depth charges on it and all that other stuff, fine, okay, I can see it. But it isn't. So I'm, I'm not really a fan of the way that that works. That's, that's like my biggest gripe about the game, is, uh, from a naval aspect, is just the anti-submarine warfare doesn't seem right to me. And right now, I am glad I brought a battleship. Suck it, destroyer. Come at me, bro. Uh, we'll just leave those infantry kicking around, waiting. And so you see, before we were getting hits of zero, now we're getting hits of three. And I have a feeling that was a zero because it's at extreme range. And really, I shouldn't be trading fire between the two. I should be focusing my fire. Uh, so it looks like two is the best bet we're going to get. We're going to focus the rest of these ships on that American destroyer. And then... 
and we'll get that guy in for a one shot and that should be it let's hit the next turn Another destroyer. And here comes that Dutch cruiser and a Dutch destroyer. So we got a few more uh, destroyers up here than I thought. And of course, we've got a submarine. Any ships that have taken significant damage can be sent back to our naval base at Kui or Kura via the exit points in the northeast. When the necessary repairs are complete, they can be returned back to the combat zone. Anytime I've sent ships that way, they haven't come back. So I don't know if they actually do come back. But it is something that they say does happen. So uh, what I want to do... Yeah, so we know that there's a submarine out here somewhere. But we're not exactly sure where. So I'll just move one destroyer back there and then we can do a sonar scan next turn. I think that's it for everybody up here. No! Can we get closer? We can and we will. The one advantage, of course, is that the submarine torpedo firing is on a cooldown. The uh, unfortunate thing is, you know, they can move. So... You know, again, we'll have to commit that guy to it, but at least we'll get rid of that dis that submarine right now. Now we can get in a little bit closer. And that battleship should be able to finish him off. No harm done. And then we got our support ship. We'll start sending the support ship up north. There shouldn't be much in the way of enemy contacts out here unless the submarine from the north survives. And that ship has taken a beating. I think what I'm going to do, because I don't want to lose any ships yet, so let's take the tone, send it over here, and what these support ships can do um, is, as long as we let this guy wait and we'll put the support ship on a nap, uh, he can repair ships while they're at sea, which is nice. I like that. So let's go take you, a little bit of damage, and... A little bit of damage. And... Can we get more than one? No, so we'll pull you down. A little bit of damage. And then I'd like to think that our battleship can end it, but... It can. Ho-ho! Look at us go. Alright, let's see if we can find that submarine. Way over there! So we'll drop some depth charges on him. We've got a Royal Navy submarine, which means we're going to have to pull our destroyers back. Uh, so we can have two to hit him next time. And that pretty much takes care of him. Now our big guns can hit, but if we reposition, then next turn they'll be able to do a bit more damage. So we'll take the we'll take the pot shots now. And then next turn the gun should be dialed in to do even more damage. Yeah, you can you can come right at me. So, as you can see, the as, the as the airfields on Borneo are inoperative due to heavy rains, Imperial headquarters have decided to occupy Bali or Bali, or however you want to pronounce that. Our landing forces has quickly dispatched the militia defenders to capture the island and its airfields. So now, this transport down here, we don't gotta worry about saving it. Those, or those two transports. They've landed, they've done their job, they've got some anti-aircraft anti weapons, we're all set and ready to go. Let's take a look at our forces then. 
and figure out what we want to deploy. Now, as I said before, I am kind of curious about deploying a dive bomber squadron against our torpedo bomber squadron. And that'll put us at six, so we can actually deploy two torpedo bomber squadrons and a dive bomber squadron. Because I don't think we're going to be running into any enemy aircraft whatsoever. So let's take these guys and we will repair them. And we'll switch them to bombs and we'll put them down. And then we'll go and we'll purchase a dive bomber. Purchase and deploy and we'll put him down. Because I am curious, it seemed like these guys weren't all that effective at the dive bombing against infantry. I don't know if that's just dive bombing in general or what, but um, we're going to keep just those two on there. We'll leave that and, you know, we, we, got, we got plenty of planes in reserve if we need to adjust. And we're going to want to start moving our forces. And my theory about not moving at full speed has been entirely defeated. Three, what are you sitting at now? Four plus? Four plus. Which is five, which is fine. And then we can go ahead and repair that guy. For free! I mean, that's the genius thing about these support ships, is that it doesn't cost us anything. And I like that. Let's find that enemy submarine. And hopefully end him. I think we'll be able to. And how's this looking? Can we get... We can get closer. And still engage. Um, you're not even in gun range, so let's get you closer. I guess you're just a destroyer. And if we put you up here, it'll be a little bit. Then we'll have those two destroyers come in and assist. Those guys are done. We, everybody's done. Let's move on. Yes. Move transport. Imperial headquarters have informed us that the Java invasion force is being prepared and will arrive from the north in four turns. Further instructions dictate we must position all warships here to protect the convoy upon its arrival. So, <clears throat> this group here should be able... Come on. Oh, there's more of you bastards, is there? I see the way this is going to go. Alright, well that's just one bomber, or one bomber. That's just one ship. Uh, that is, without a doubt, one of the best bombing runs, or attack runs, available. We can start shifting our ships. Which, for the record, that's a fun phrase to say. Shifting our ships. So let's get our bombers moving. Like I say, I think we're going to make contact with the enemy fleets over here. But if we can get these guys... Out and about, then we will be doing wonders. Who's yet to move? Well, you're not going to be able to hit him. A couple more destroyers, obviously with their torpedoes. If they sink, you know, ships that aren't mine, it's annoying. Oh, oh dear. <clears throat> We've captured Singapore, that is great news, but we do have some Warhawks to deal with. So let's get our Zeros out, and um, considering the situation, I don't necessarily want my bombers being made targets. Oh, why did I put those guys there? Still, the Zeros should be able to protect. And um, what we can do is just utilize them more effectively. Why did why did you stop there? I wanted you to go further. 
Stopping there is really annoying. Still, I guess it could be worse. Alright, let's get a shot off on this guy. This light cruiser should be able to do a little bit of damage, but he is incredibly damaged himself. So... Two, 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 okay. Two. Though I think maybe it would have been better to focus on the Dutch ship. Because... Really? We're not going to be able to get any shots off? What about a torpedo attack? One. Not worth it. Although I guess any damage is probably better than no damage, right? So maybe it would have been worth it. I think that's it. We can get rid of the force panel. And yeah, because you're just going to attack, so that's fine. Continue. Well, let's go into that square. Maybe there's another submarine up there. Hey, yeah, if you want to strafe enemy ships, little fighter, go right ahead. Yeah. Yeah, that cruiser is not long for this world. But that transport will survive, and that's really all that matters. So we can, um, let's see. We can finish him off. And that's four. That's four. I like that. Two, three. We'll take the three. And three, two, three. Well, I mean, that's going to do hopefully some damage. It does. So now we can get away with a two. And move this guy his full distance. And at least get closer to where those uh, transport ships are going to come in. So let's start heading west. Well, northwest, really. Again, if those fighters wish to strafe my ships, they can. Um, let's just quickly check. What's your any aircraft range? Just out of any aircraft range. I probably could have planned that a bit better. Let's get our zero up and flying. Uh, we do have that bomber over there, which I should have remembered. Anyway, we'll land you, and quite honestly, I could probably get these guys out. And over. So, yeah, we'll do that. I have no idea where this bomber's going. But... There's really nothing around here that he can do much damage to. So let's go ahead and repair you. We'll get you ready to go next turn. And, like I say, if this fighter... Well, no, we should keep moving. That fighter wants to keep strafing ships with any aircraft guns? You can do that all day. Whoop. Get you around. And then start pulling these guys across. And I can't believe that little light cruiser has survived. Okay, so there's the fleet, the fleet of transports, and you can see they came with a destroyer escort, which is, as always, well appreciated. <clears throat> so let's get these guys on the move. Now we've got 191 credits, and we've got enough, whoa, enough force limit to afford another ship. So what I'd like to take a look at is maybe getting another tone, because we can, whoops, we can drop that guy up here, which will help, excuse me, with the protection of those transports, along with the fleet we've got coming uh, from the northeast. So even without our battleship, I think we've got more than enough naval guns here to defend whatever is coming our way, uh, as well as take care of any...
other threat that may be facing us, uh, whether that be with, you know, our aircraft or uh, the reserve fleet, as I'm naming this group down here, which, you know, a, a reserve fleet with a battleship, that's pretty impressive. I think anyway. So let's get the cruiser moving and get our destroyers to just effectively escort those guys. I don't think we'll be running into any enemy submarines. And we've made visual contact with those transports. So that's good. What we can then do is combine the destroyer escorts and the cruiser and that group there. and really be able to effectively protect everything. Now, we know that there is another plane coming from this direction, right there, that bomber. And we can start getting our own bombers moving. Perfect. Oh, hello, fighter. And that fighter is a two-strength, and... I'm at 10, so I have a feeling we should be okay. If we're not, we can just do something fun like this. Hey, look at that! Now we're totally safe. Okay, so let's take our destroyers and start pushing south to see if we can make contact with the enemy. In fact, let's take our entire fleet and start pushing south to see if we can make contact with the enemy. Come on, light cruiser, that's probably gonna wind up dead soon. Uh, we can just take you guys and start pushing you totally west. Unfortunately, that battleship is gonna be taking its sweet ass time getting anywhere. Damn those slow big ships with massive amounts of weapons on them. That's it for everybody, next turn. I don't know why it's bombing an empty airfield, but I mean, hey, if it wants to, it can. I should have pushed that a bit further, but you know, at this stage, it doesn't really matter. We should be running into that last bit of the fleet any time now. And when I say last bit, you know, that kind of has a suggestion that there's not going to be much. It's going to be the biggest section of their fleet, without a doubt. But I think by this stage, um, we're doing okay. Now we can trade blows with that guy as much as we want. We are right above our airfield, so we're free to land and uh, repair ourselves if and when we have to. But he's decided to flee, and we've finally made contact with the fleet. Now, let's talk a little naval strategery, shall we? Uh, when it comes to dive bombing targets with planes, well tempting to go for, say, the target we can see, uh, there is going to be a lot of extra anti-aircraft that will be able to assist, assist in the defense. Same as over here. We can see we've got the Java, the Witte de Wyth, the Cortinaire, and the John Ford. The Americans named their ships much easier names to uh, pronounce. So we'll take our dive bomber. He's gonna take a little bit of damage, but he should do three damage in return. Dive bombers are good against smaller, lighter ships. Torpedo bombers are better against bigger, heavier ships. That's, that's the rules of the sea. Uh, we will bring our supply ship down, but we're not going to go out of our way uh, to put that ship in danger. I don't know why we'd go out of our way to put a ship in danger. And if we got range on any of these guys, we do with our light cruiser, but it's not going to be any sort of hit. You can't move. And then we've got our fighter here, which I think will just land. 
and then next turn replace their losses. Could be expensive, yes, I do tend to waste money on things like that. Yeah, if that is indeed the only unit. Oh, whew. That would have been that would have been embarrassing for getting to move a ship. There we go. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, waste torpedoes on these light destroyers. Torpedoes are certainly going to be a pain, but, you know, stuff like that happens. Okay, let's do a little bit of science, shall we? So here is the Kanabaku. Now we know that he can do full strength, uh, three damage to a destroyer. So, I mean, that is just for dropping bombs. We've got our Kanko, which is the convertible one, and I'm going to say he can do roughly the same. So I don't think it matters all that much whether you've got the torpedo bombers that are converted to dive bombers or the dive bombers when it comes to ability to dive bomb, which is good. All right, now we're, we're freaking spoiled for targets here. I like it. Uh, let's concentrate on the ships in the south with our ships in the south. And we can probably come in. We have a chance at doing some more damage, so we will. I'm not going to waste torpedo runs on... The smaller ships, I'm going to save them for, you know, the cruisers. Especially the Deroiter, which we do need to sink. Thankfully, we're in a position where we can move some destroyers down and in. Now those torpedoes, they're not really doing a lot of damage. Which is frustrating, but... You know, you can't... Did I already move and fire with that guy? I did. Okay, so we'll drop you down. And we can pull you in a bit closer. Because you should be able to make short work of these destroyer screens. I hope. And I'm fairly confident there's going to be another wave of ships that show up. So I'm going to want to keep these guys close so I can pull them into the fight and even use these cruisers guns to assist but not move them out of range of being able to um, engage any targets that come along this way if I've got the geographic positions correct on this uh, we will replace your losses who else can move those guys are fine and we're hitting the half half an hour mark so I think sadly I'm going well I mean if we're halfway through the mission maybe this isn't a bad place to leave the episode uh, just an FYI I'm probably gonna be recording part two directly after this so if you leave a comment uh, that you know is a suggestion or gameplay tips or whatever and I don't acknowledge it in the next video the reason is because technically I haven't read it yet I can guarantee you there is a 100% chance that I will read the comment uh, after you post it. I read absolutely every single comment that is written on every single episode that I put out. Every every video, in fact, that I put out. I may not reply to all of them, but I do read all, every single one of them. So if you do leave a comment, I'm reading it. Don't worry. Uh, I just might not respond to the next video because, honestly, I'm going to be seeing that next video, or I'm going to start the next video in about... 10 seconds so yeah don't worry i read your comments and i thank you guys all very very much for all the suggestions all the tips all the encouragement you guys give me honestly it's why i do this right so uh on that note 
thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video. Leave a comment, question, concern. Leave your comments, questions, concerns, thoughts, jokes, musings, what have you below. Thank you all very, 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 very much for watching, and we'll see you